Like what is actually happening now? Because I don't feel like anything is changing right now. True, true. It's just like these events happen, but now what? Like what are people doing? Exactly. I completely, completely agree with you. And that's the thing. Like how do you sustain um, energy and attention around any of the social ills? You know, it's like addiction and the the opiate crisis that we're faced. I mean, there's so many of these things and I think we're like so tethered to our devices yeah. that we actually confuse these issues to be a form of like, you know, entertainment, something that like gets our adrenaline running and it lets us express anger or rage or apathy. Um, but, but if it's not mobilizing us toward action um, and even more importantly, helping um, to sort of foster a sense that we're all accountable. Like, how can we all participate in shifting the dynamics of our society? Let's get started. All right. Awesome. Thank so I'm you. here with Neja, called A New American Badass by Time Out New York. She's an artist, instigator of personal revolutions, and award-winning content creator with 20 plus years of unique experience creating progressive bodies of work that encourage critical self-inquiry, facilitate personal transformation, and inspire radical change. Rise Up is also the winner of this year's Cosm Film Fest Award for Best Music Video Short offers a powerful rock and roll protest anthem. It is as much a document of black resilience as it is an unnerving portrait of the heinous violence acted upon black and brown bodies, combining a striking color palette, which is beautiful, by the way, we'll talk about in a minute, <laughs> daring imagery, experimental animation, and live performance. Rise Up is an unmistakable visual indictment of police brutality and racial bias in America. In it, nature probes black rage and raises the question of what to do when justice cannot be expected. Mm. <laughs> wow. It's always interesting to hear these things read back, you know, you're like, no. ah! So the, the idea to come up for Rise Up, obviously very much so impacted by the events that have happened over the past few years. Was there a point for you that kind of made the visuals impact the messaging that you wanted to create with this video? Um, I would say yes. Um, I think, you know, probably, you know, the majority of musicians you uh, speak to who write their own stuff are always, you know, providing commentary to life, either what's happening for us internally on a personal level or what's happening um, socially. And the lyrics for the song actually had come um, long before the impetus to create a video for it. I started exploring those lyrics really after Trayvon Martin's um, death. Um, it was so um, just traumatizing. And I think that set the stage for a level of attention to be, to be brought um, to these injustices in a way that it had not been on a public stage. Um, but after George Floyd, which I feel, um, you know, was the instance that sort of galvanized all of the world, uh, in America in particular, to pay attention, that I felt like, oh my God, I just have to put a visual to this song um, that's been recorded and, and you know, figure out that little corner of the world in which I can participate in the larger conversation because I feel like that's what the time test us all with. Like, what role do I want to play? We could all be mad or belligerent. Um, and there were many sides of it. I, I think it may or may not be mentioned in um, the bio, but I'm a, a counselor, a transformational counselor and life coach. And the other thing that occurred at that time, which was so interesting, is I had um, a former client uh, contact me, um, who's a white woman and who I adore. You know, we've known each other for 20 years now. Yeah. Um, but she she was going through uh, an experience herself that um, you know I don't want to over disclose, but. Um, she was being challenged to look at her own participation and um, her response to it. 
by another white woman. And she sought me out to sort of work through and process that. Right. And, um, and so what it did is it made for me very real at that time, everything that is a black woman I'm feeling and, um, you know, and brown and uh, uh, black people, but also thinking about like this real um, sense of confusion and helplessness to some extent that mm -hmm. she was feeling. And, and then my needing to be in relation to that, um, you know, both as a professional um, and, and as an artist, but also, you know, just as a human being. And so I felt like if there is some way to take on this really ambitious um, desire of mine to sort of reach into all of those nuances, either through um, the lyrics or, uh, you know, the way we offered the song in terms of performance, and even more importantly, a lot of the imagery that um, we chose um, in post to help sort of tell this very nuanced story. And, and George Floyd and the subsequent fallout was absolutely the catalyst um, for bringing it together in visual form. Right. Wow. What was, uh, so were you were you a part of the visual process as well? Like from beginning to the end of making the whole video? Absolutely, yep, I was. Um, and I work with the same editor that I've worked okay. on with a, a, before for a previous um, music video. So I knew that um, our capacity for collaborating and really communicating or conveying uh, what I had in mind um, starting out just from a directoral point of view, I knew that he could help really convey that. So, right. yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yeah, I think that, you know, when you're doing short form, whether it's a short film or a music video, um, I think a lot of people struggle with be able, being able to encapsulate an entire story in such a limited amount of time. Exactly, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, because it's so many, you know, there's all of the uh, technical aspects to figure out. Um, and then they have to sort of honor rather than oppress um, the very artistic things that you want to convey. Um, so, you know, a little bit at a time, but I feel like it's a lot of organizing. Um, the shorter the format is, like a lot. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a little bit like writing, I suppose, maybe even um, a haiku or a short poem, but, you know, you have to keep coming back to what is the central thing that I'm hoping, um, you know, my, uh, the reader or the audience will take away from this. Um, and it, you know, it forces you to sort of stay in that container too. And I think without that kind of guiding post, it's very easy to <laughs> just like spill yeah. over the place. Um, Cause you can't say everything um, in such a short. Form. Yeah, that's such a great point. I think a lot of people get lost a bit in their projects and and um, it, it's great to just keep in mind what what is the messaging I'm trying to get across? What do I want the audience to feel during the process of watching this? Um, were there any were there any issues that came up during production? Absolutely. <laughs> and, and look, I know you knew the answer to that question, doesn't it always? There you go. <laughs> um, and you know, Corey, so shouting out my editor again, it's why I love him because I feel that often enough, um, he's had to come in and sort of be an alchemist, if you will, to help um, address or overcorrect things that did not line up exactly the way you want it for us yeah. but that had to do with the green screen okay. um, you know like all of the um care that had been taken to make sure we found the exact right studio you know the cyclone the wall and you know lighting and it wasn't until you know we arrived on set because the video was actually shot in atlanta i traveled there to shoot oh okay and um you know there's this you know there's this light this like situated right behind me and it deeply impacted being able to key out, right? And so yeah, we had to move away from an, an original intention there that I had to um, uh, put actual moving live projection in post. But because we couldn't key that, 
you know, so here we are back at uh, ground zero and um, you know, you have to take the problem and then allow your imagination to uh, apply itself to it, figure out, okay, well, what can we do? And I felt so um, committed to the wish um, and the original intention to have a second story playing behind us. Yeah. Sort of how you saw what we ended up calling those wiggle rooms with all of the signs. Yeah. And I, I loved it. You know, I thought it ended up being uh, masterful in terms of at least meeting what I had hoped to meet. But at first I was really concerned. He was like, I'm, you know, nature, we're not gonna be able to key this. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it's the main freaking thing. <laughs> Uh, you know, I've been a big Oliver Stone fan and I love how he has often used like the wall and the background of environments to be mm. in another part of the narrative, you know, while the actors are at sort of forefront in your mind. Yeah. Um, so that was a huge technical issue um, that I feel like we got around, which I'm really grateful about, but I was very concerned and, and initially almost didn't even submit until I kept getting feedback, particularly from one girlfriend who um, is an amazing celebrated filmmaker and um, uh, an actor with a lot of amazing one woman shows. She's like, are you crazy? Like, it's so meaningful. You have to, um, you know, place yourself in that environment so you can have the larger discussions about the piece. And I'm, I'm so glad that you know, she recommended that and, and I've been able to meet amazing people like yourself, so. Yeah, that's, I'm so, I'm so happy she gave you that advice. I, I was going to ask, like, is this the first piece that you've submitted to film festivals? It is, it actually is, yes. And I love it though, you know, it's, I was saying to, um, you know, a friend of mine, the, the format, film, short or long format, really allows for me to, um, to, to sort of play, you know, on a playground with all of the mediums that I thoroughly enjoy. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, as a writer, as a lyricist, as a performer, um, as someone like really into aesthetic and, and visuals, like it all comes together yeah. in this medium. And so um, it's really for me helped establish, um, you know, even a focus going forward of where I may want to spend more of my time artistically. Yeah. Wow. So moving moving forward, um, what what are the next projects that you have coming up that you're working on? Um, when we were um, filming that, I was also filming um, in, in Brooklyn at the same time, a personal project that if you sort of think of uh, master classes yeah <laughs> I think of combining that with um uh, a short biopic documentary it's kind of an interdisciplinary film project that i want to take on but it is autobiographical um it will use music and, and my songs but that of others as well as a backdrop uh for mm. which to to not only tell personal story but to impart uh, the nuggets of wisdom that, you know, just as a coach and a counselor, I think are important. Because um, I'm always wanting to impact the larger conversation around, you know, how do we heal? How do we yeah. engage in the really difficult conversations that everybody yeah. wants to shy away from? That's um, true, yeah. You know, and, and Rise Up just happened to be, you know, that that's the tough conversation of, um, you know, race. Um, but there are so many others, um, and I am somebody who's really interested in the intersection of like all the places where we feel uncomfortable because the subject feels too taboo. But yeah. I think we all can appreciate that art of the various disciplines helps us approach su subjects that we would otherwise do our best to stay away from. So it's a, a, a personal project. Um, I don't even know what to call it yet, but I'm, I'll definitely keep you posted. It'll, it'll come. It'll definitely come. I think I think that you're you're you know, it's so true though, and it's it's really unfortunate. I think, you know, there there was so much that had happened, and then I feel as of late, you know, I was just talking to someone the other day. I was like, well, what's happening now though? 
Like, what is the next step? Like, what is actually happening now? Because I don't feel like anything is changing right now. True, true. It's just like these events happen, but now what? Like, what are people doing? Exactly. I completely, completely agree with you. And that's the thing. Like, how do you sustain um, energy and attention around any of the social ills? You know, it's like addiction and the, the opiate crisis that we're faced. I mean, there's so many of these things. And... I think we're like so tethered to our devices yeah. that we actually confuse these issues to be a form of like, you know, entertainment, something that like gets our adrenaline running and it lets us express anger or rage or apathy. Um, but, but if it's not mobilizing us toward action um, and even more importantly, helping um, to sort of foster a sense that we're all accountable. Like, how can we all participate in shifting the dynamics of our society? Because we're all, a, a you know, an outgrowth of that society. So if the society is sick, then we're sick. And unfortunately, people, um, people, myself, we tend to not take sustained action until you hit a, a kind of rock bottom of sorts, right? Where you're like, I'm so sick and tired of being sick and tired that, you know, now I know I've got to do something different and I've got to do it with consistency. And I feel the pandemic um, invited us toward that opportunity. Um, and it's been hard <laughs> for us to sort of integrate what I believe was that opportunity to look at how are we living, what is the world that we're creating, how can we change that, um, that you balance that against sort of the impatience for things to get back to normal and, you know, prime example of some yeah. kind of opportunity lost. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's um it's frustrating though. <laughs> it's I see it. I see it. I feel it all in your <laughs> Yeah. Um so what would you what would you say to, you know, we live in a completely different world, um, especially the younger generation. What would you say to up and coming artists in terms of like the the best like what they can do to really get their message out there? Because there's so much content out there these days. Mm -hmm. Um I feel like sometimes it's it, it might feel sometimes for somebody that's just starting out, you might be, your voice is drowning a bit in the crowd of people that are trying to create content. Absolutely. Because, you know, I think even if we've been content creators for a long time, we still can feel that. Um, Cause it's overwhelming, right? And the messaging every single day is create, create, create um, content. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, not that I, you know, I don't disagree with that message, but there's not enough discussion about why, like intent, and um, how to facilitate your purpose through that. So um, to, to your question about what I would, um, you know, offer or suggest to young people is, you know, don't make content just for the purpose of making content, but to really, um, you know, see it as a opportunity to begin like this journey of self exploration and, and radical um, creative expression. Because when you sit with yourself long enough to feel like, you know, who am I? What is it that I have to offer? What is the creative fingerprint, um, you know, that I want to leave with the world? And that's such a, a very personal um, answer. Yeah. That no matter if 50 million of us are creating content, that creative fingerprint is unique to you. So I think if we spend more time just what do I want to produce and why, mm. I think that can help remove you from the sense of like competition and drowning because then you're actually not doing anything in relation to anyone else. You're doing it as an outgrowth of a commitment um, to yourself. Right. And then the only other thing that I would say is, you know, explore all of the mediums, you know, video, film, uh, writing, one woman show, there's a whole bunch. And you can't really know like what your sweet spot is until you play with um, any number of them, or maybe it's to combine them. 
So um, I think those two things, you know, your your deep why, <laughs> and then playing with all of the hows, which medium to you. I love that. It's a fantastic answer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so before we end here, where can people find you? Um, my uh, home website is nature.com, www.neycha.com. And from that site, um, they can find links to um, the other bodies of work that I do. Um, obviously on YouTube, um, uh, the handle is Rebel Nature, um, R-E-B-E-L-N-E-Y-C-H-A. And Instagram, all of the social media handles are essentially my name, N-E-Y-C-H-A. And I invite people to check it out. Perfect. Thank you, Nature, so much for your time. So I'm so excited to premiere Rise Up at the Film oh, Festival this year. Look, thank you. And it is such a delight to me. You have amazing energy. So I, I look forward to just staying connected with you and, and building and learning more about you. I would love that, yeah. You're like glowing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, yeah.